Hello and welcome to a new cozy painting video where you watch me paint a new piece. I'm excited to show you. My name's Sophie McPike. I am based in Melbourne, Australia. I'm an artist. I like to play with colour. I like to scribble. I like to sketchbook. It can get a bit silly, but it's mostly a cozy time here. Um, yeah, so today I'm working on a piece for the Waste of Space Residency run by Dodgy Paper and Lousy Ink here in Melbourne. Uh, I went on a residency and spent the day making paper using offcuts and misprints and bits of pellet and paint things to make paper. And then I ran into the Lousy Lab and created my own pigment, which you see here, it's that kind of soft lavender cornflower blues type periwinkle kind of color i'm not sure what it is but i've titled it this will be nice which if you didn't know is my business name so i thought that was pretty pretty apt <laughs> um yeah so i did a video like this last week painting my second piece for their group show and um, I thought with this video today, I could talk a lot more about my process. So you can see, I'm just doing some really, really loose doodles in my sketchbook, trying to figure out what I want to draw, what I want to paint, how I want to paint it, the rhythm and flow of things. The last couple of pieces have been very like flower heavy. Um, and in almost like a symmetrical kind of thing. So this one I wanted to make a bit more flowy, but to keep it in the same theme. The other two pieces were mainly like one was uh, half of her head. The other one was a head and shoulders. So I thought this one would be better as a full body piece. There's a nice close up of the dodgy paper. You can see all the little rainbow bits in it from um, paints and paintings, which is very exciting and very cute. So I'm gonna be using this lousy ink for mainly the base. Um, it's a really lovely ink. He makes them using uh, rejected and recycled printer cartridge ink but this one has a bit of a thickener in it so it works really really beautifully on the handmade pa paper so yeah I just went in with a brush after a little bit of a sketch just as a guide I I try not to sketch too much because I don't want the pencil like I don't want to be able to see the sketchy lines I want it to look nice and clear and you can't really use an eraser you can't really rub out stuff on the handmade paper because it just rolls it all up. It gets all gets all bad, goes yuck. So yeah, I just like try to use a little bit of my mind's eye to figure out where things go. Do you know what I mean? Like kind of see it projected onto the page, the page before I paint onto it mostly, but sometimes I need a little bit of a guide. Now handmade paper is thirsty. So it was drinking up the ink really quick. Like you've only sort of got a couple of good brush strokes in it before the paper drinks it all up. Um, which I kind of like, honestly, because it almost feels like it dries it really quickly. So I tend to rest my hand on my paper a lot of the time. And uh, because the paper absorbs so much paint so quickly, it dries quite quickly. So I was able to rest my hand on the paper really easily without getting much stuff all over my hand or like smudges and things. Uh, I really enjoy painting with this ink. I'm looking forward to trying it on some watercolor paper as well, just to see how different it, it goes, how different it moves, but I'm really enjoying the looseness of it. I allowed some drips and stuff to fall around and to th be thrown around on the paper. I don't, I don't mind that. I like to see that sort of thing. Like I don't want to be too perfectionist about my stuff. The paper is already, very speckly and covered in paint anyway and I just thought oh, little drips here and there kind of add to the funness. So so the plan is to do a base with the lousy ink color that I've done and then to build up layers using acrylic gouache paint which is um, my favorite 
paint at the moment. I love painting with the acrylic gouache on the dodgy paper because it's so thick and creamy, it just lays really beautiful on the textured paper that is uneven, handmade. It's it's good. It's really good. It's really creamy and you'll you'll see. So, you know, I'm trying really hard at this point in my mind's eye to like figure out where things are going to go. I've got different um, ideas of flowers and like the the stalks of the flowers, how they move around on the inside shape of this character's body. Um, it's hard to do in my brain, but I was also, yeah, it's also like I need to get it out before I forget, <laughs> forget where everything goes. Um, but anyway, I, I went in with this really beautiful ultramarine, it's called ultramarine blue in Holbein paint and I'm just straight from the tube, it's not mixed or anything. I like to mix a lot of my colours and get, get a bit fun and messy with mixing colours, but this one was straight from the tube. Um, really beautiful as a, a skin color tone. The other two characters, one characters, like I used a real pale, pale lavender gouache as the skin tone. The next character was, the skin tone was the lousy ink. So it was like a medium color and then this one was a darker color. So um, I thought they would all look really nice next to each other, hanging on a wall. Some satisfying shots of uh, kind of, I, I guess you would say negative space, just cutting in where I want the stalks of the flowers to kind of dance around inside the body um, and just yeah, trying to figure it out. Luckily the, the ink is thick enough that I did, I was able to go back and just like clean up some of the lines and you can't really tell, um, which is really nice, which was very fortunate. Love when that happens. I didn't think it would be thick enough, but I tried it and it worked, which was nice. So a lot of my process is just like figuring out what I'm doing at the time. I'm not much of a planner. I feel like this painting I planned more than I usually plan when I go for a painting. Sometimes I just like do a quick little scribble and then in my sketchbook and then dive straight into the painting and see what happens. And as I layer my colors, I'm like, this is working. This is not working. I need to change this color or I need to go back to the original color. You know, like it's all very just dancing around on the spot until I nestle into a little nest that I really like in the, in terms of color and design and rhythm and flow within my paintings. Yeah, that's me. Very just like go with the flow, I guess. <laughs> I think a part of that is fun because I tend to make, I wouldn't say mistakes, but I tend to make decisions which might not have been the correct decision or it might have been the correct decision, but then further down the line in the paintings, other decisions, decisions I make will mean that original decisions I made have to be changed just to like flow with the new direction. So now I'm moving on to a really dark blue. This is a Prussian blue. This again is straight from the tube. I haven't mixed it. Um, and it looks really, really nice with all of these blues and purples. I think just uh, like it gives it a really nice, rich pop of a darker shade, which it needs. So I'm just playing with some hair blobs and fun shapes. I know it just adds a really nice bit of shape language. Now we're doing the butt. Um, love a bit of a compressed cheek. <laughs> Who doesn't um, in this position? Very fun. And now just going in and doing some more layering with other colors. So this color is a lilac. Um, and it looks really nice. Like when it dries, it has a bit more of that warmth purple, that warm purple tone to it. There's quite a few moments where I sit back and I look at everything and I'm like, where is there 
heaviness in an area? Where is there lightness in an area? Where do I need to balance some things out? Um, and these little circle motifs with little sparkle kind of shape in it has been a really fun way for me to play with the balance of heaviness and lightness in my painting. I have no idea if that's making sense, but you know, if the bulk of something is happening in one area and there's not enough happening in another area, it can look like the painting is falling over or something like that. So I've been adding like these fun little sparkle motifs in these particular, in this series. And it's been really, really fun. Um, I, I love a bit of clutter as well. So I feel like this is a good clutter element for me to, um, one, give like a lot of interest to the painting and two, like balance out um, parts that might be too heavy or too light, just to like bring it all together and make it feel like a well-balanced and rhythmic painting or illustration. And it's super satisfying to paint in those sparkles. <laughs> I love it. I love doing it in a negative space way and a positive space way as well. So when I say negative space like this, painting the outside of the sparkle and then positive space painting the actual sparkle. And uh, I love layering as well. I feel like not enough people understand layering. You really have to layer to get really nice depth. Um, and yeah, it just brings this extra like oomph to a painting, which I, I love. You can't see me now, but I'm totally talking with my hands, like waving them all around the place. Now I'm just adding some smaller details with the darker color, the Prussian blue. And this Prussian blue, like sometimes I'll mix it with a little bit of the ultramarine just to get a little bit of a, a mid, uh, not so dark color. This was really satisfying. I really enjoyed painting these little darker bits on these little flowers. I could have done that all day. <laughs> I need more flowers. I, I always like wash my brush onto my sketchbook as well. It's really fun to draw on later, highly recommend. Now I'm just double checking, looking over everything to make sure it's all balanced. And here's our final piece which is really cute and I'm had, I had so much fun doing this one. I'm really, really enjoying this series. Um, I've done three pieces now, which uh, I think look really cute together. I cannot wait to see them at the show. The Dodgy Paper and Lousy Ink are having an exhibition which features 30 of their artists that came in to do the residency. And I won't be there for opening night, unfortunately, but I cannot wait to go see the show later. It's gonna look so good. So if you're around, highly recommend. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye, 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 bye. Toodoo.